things theology, all things theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hallowed be, cause this is how we do it at all things theology. That's right, salvation is deliverance, and we're gonna get into that here in a second. I, I wanna play this clip. Now we're gonna get to a section where we talk about Isaiah Saldivar. Isaiah Saldivar, one of the kings and up and coming risers in the deliverance ministries. It is blasphemous to teach that someone can have a demon and the Holy Spirit in them at the same time. I'm gonna show that biblically, but let's play this clip. How can a Christian who has the Holy Spirit also have a demon? Yeah, so this is a major question that we can probably go long on. We won't take a lot of time on it. But I tell people all the time, a Christian could have whatever they want. Like they say, a Christian can't have a demon. And I'm like, uh, what else can they not have? Are they not allowed to have a donut? Are they not allowed to have a coffee? Like a Christian. That's absurd. That is an absurd argument. Well, if you can be a Christian, you can have coffee too. Uh, let me show you something real quick. Let's get into the text. I think this is important to demonstrate to people that Christians cannot be demon possessed never in scripture is that shown As a matter of fact the opposite yeah comparing a demon to a donut or a coffee is ridiculous christians can have coffee christians can have donuts one that's not sin L let's listen to let's, let's look at this verse uh, mark 3 chapter uh mark 3 uh, starting at verse 22 it says and the scribes who came down from jerusalem who were saying he is possessed by bezebel and by the prince of demons he cast out demons and he called them to him and saying to them in parables how can Satan cast out Satan? Very good question. Jesus is the master debater, right? He's the master orator, king of logic. You cannot trap Jesus in a logical fallacy. He's too wise. He says if a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. Yep. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. So Jesus is arguing. You can't be divided in that house, in that temple. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but it's coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Right? Jesus is arguing there cannot be a divided kingdom. If you have the spirit of God and the temple in you, you have a divided kingdom. Absolutely. You have a divided kingdom in, inside of you. Obviously, we know. Yeah, that's right. Jesus disarmed the rulers and authorities, put them in open shame by triumphing over them. Guys, if you are a Christian, if you have been filled with the spirit of God, there's nothing to fear. You have no demon in you. Christ has reigned victorious. He has put to death that in you, and you are protected. You are protected eternally. Can have whatever they want. <laughs> when you get saved, you don't all of a sudden get a license to live however you want and be protected. In fact, <laughs> God never protects people in disobedience. Sin isn't a demon, because if that's the case, you always have a demon, which he doesn't believe that. That's absurd. So if you open a door, like if I open my front door right now, I don't get to say, if a fly flies in, you're not allowed to fly in here because the door is open. A fly can come in, a wasp can come in, a rat can come in. If you leave the door open, stuff can come in, whether you're a Christian or not. So a couple things we have to ask ourselves. Number one, is there any scripture that says a Christian can't have a demon? Because at the end of the day- Yes, and I, I believe I re referred to one. You cannot have a kingdom that's divided within you. So yes, a Christian cannot have a divided kingdom, the spirit and a demon in them. Very clear. If you have a demon inside of you, that is guaranteed proof you have not been regenerated. Guaranteed. Is there a place in scripture where the Bible says you can't, a Christian can't have a demon? And the answer is no. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says a Christian. There is numerous places. I just went to one demonstrating that. You can't have a demon. In fact, the Bible would point to and allude to the fact that deliverance is actually for Christians, actually for the believer. And then, and then let me also bring up another point. Let's get to this issue of deliverance. What does deliverance mean? Well, we got to do this first. Take you to the Greek. Let's take it to the Greek. Deliverance, right? The Greek word for that is soter soteria. Soteria, right? Which literally means deliverance or salvation. The common use of deliverance is literally salvation. You know, we, we have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness. Well, they don't believe that. They don't believe that the kingdom of we've been transferred and delivered from the kingdom of darkness. You can get, go right back to that. Right. Ephesians. 
the common use of salvation is speaking of being saved from our sins. The word soteria, not demonic possession and being uh, delivered from that. Deliverance today has taken on a whole nother meaning that historically, theologically, it has not meant. We have, you know, and this is why we'll be saved from a, a future destruction. Now, so there's three tenses of, of deliverance, past, present, and future that we're experiencing, have experienced, and will experience on that great day. But these guys have taken so little of this and made this a whole huge doctrine, which the Bible, the word they're using is actually talking about salvation largely. But I want to react also to this part where um, Isaiah Saldivar says, you're not preaching the gospel if you're not casting out demons. Anyone who says signs and, signs and wonders don't matter or isn't required in presenting the gospel is completely wrong. Paul says this. So if you're saying, now notice this is why Isaiah has a false gospel. He adds uh, demon possession, casting out demons to the gospel. In 1 Corinthians 15, <laughs> demon possession is not mentioned, or uh, casting out demons is not even mentioned in this text. It says, now I remind you brothers of the gospel I preached to you, which you which you received and which you stand and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Right? Then he goes and appears to nothing about demonic possession in mention of the gospel contents. Nothing about demonic possession or casting out demons. So essentially, um, He's arguing you have not preached the gospel if you have not casted out a demon. That is absurd and that is a works-based gospel. That is an addition to what the Bible says the gospel is. My friends, you don't need to cast out anything. All you need is the content of the gospel. All you need is the content of the gospel to preach the gospel. That is absurd. And I can't believe that was argued by a so-called pastor. Signs and wonders gave him full confidence that he fully preached the gospel and without them, the gospel is not full. Here's what the NLT says. They were convinced by the power of miraculous signs and wonders and by the power of God's spirit. In this way, in what way? By the miraculous signs and wonders. In this way, I have fully presented the good news of Christ from Jerusalem all the way to Lyricum. In today's era of Christianity, we've- Well, here's the, here's the difference. The apostle apostolic age was, was confirmed uh, by, 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 by signs and gifts. There's no need to reaffirm our message. As a matter of fact, that was prophetically. Uh, with the Messiah would come bringing signs. We don't have to reaffirm his message. Why? Because we have the full canon. There's no need for us to reaffirm the foundation. The foundation's been laid. We don't need to lay it over every every generation. Lost the convincing factor. The thing that was convincing people in Paul's day was the signs and wonders. No, it was not. What did he? What did? What did? What the same apostle said this? Hold on. Apostle Paul says, "For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing." Mm. But to those who are being saved, this is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? I love that verse. I often use this when I'm open air preaching. Where is the wise one? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preached. To save those who believe. I, I love I love this. It's even in the folly of God, so to speak, even if that was a thing, Paul is using a presuppositional argument. His wisdom is still smarter than the wisest man. For Jews demand signs. Look at this. What do they want all the time when Jesus give us the bread like Moses gave? Right? Give us the bread like Moses. What did the Greeks demand? Wisdom, Sophia. But we preach Christ. Notice the contrast. The Jews demand signs. They seek, the Greeks seek wisdom. We don't give them that. What do we get? Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, see, this is why I believe in an election. Those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger the men so much we could lay out there but my friends you don't need signs you don't need the miraculous to preach the gospel preach the gospel preach the gospel the gospel is not contingent upon signs and wonders 
At least not done by you. We have the ultimate sign. You know what it is? The resurrection. Christ rose from the grave. Up from the grave he rose. I love that hymn. Up from the grave he rose. Love that, man. See, this is why you got to get your hymn game on. That is the power of God. The gospel. The gospel is the power of God to salvation. To those who believe, Romans 1, 16, 1, 17, that is the dunamis of God. The gospel. See, this is why it's so important, y'all. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone leaves. The gospel is what has the power. Preach the gospel. The cross work of Christ is what's sufficient. These guys just talk about demons all day. Demons, demons, demons. I preach Christ. Come to Christ and live. Yo, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you heard here today, why don't you go and leave me a like? Subscribe to the channel if it's your first time here. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly content, lives, interacting, exposing false teachers, showing you my theological beliefs and what I believe the Bible teaches. So if you're here for that, go on and join us. Happy